Tech for Seniors, episode 29. This is, this is October 12th, 2020. 29, you guys. What do you what do you think, Huey? Who would have thunk it, huh? That's, That's seven amazing. months ago. Wow. Bob, what do you think? Just another wonderful meeting coming up. <laughs> Oh, we we're having we're eight. having a lot we're having a lot of fun. Anyway, Ray, how are you today? I'm doing good. Wasn't the pandemic supposed to be over by now? Oh yeah, but I think <laughs> uh, but we're having so much fun. We're keeping going, okay. right? So yep. um, I want to I want to welcome everyone here today. We have a <clears> huge <throat> show for you today. Lots of lots of exciting stuff happening. Lots of news. Uh, the first thing, uh, welcome to all the Canadians here because it is the Canadian Thanksgiving. Monday is today's a holiday and for all those of you who are uh, Canadians having some family times please stay safe uh, and and we will um, the, the the problem today though is it's my Costco afternoon and Costco even closes on Thanksgiving here so I can't go to Costco this afternoon so that's a, that's a bit of a downer however the other thing I wanted to uh, introduce everybody to a new member of our team Dewey Close and Dewey is a longtime friend of mine. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a whole, my whole seven minutes telling you all the great things he does, other than Thank he's you. a great, other than he's a great guy. I've known him for 10 years. And he, what we, Dewey and I did a lot of work on, on cord cutting this last couple of years. We gave a lot of Roku boxes away and a lot of fire sticks. And I said, you know, I want you to do a short, a short segment on cord cutting and for our, for our show. Now, he has a wonderful wife, Joanne, and I know Joanne is going to have her finger on his ear and, and she's going to time him. And if he goes over the time, she's going to be tagging on his ear for sure. I know Joanne will do that for me. <laughs> Probably. <All right>. <laughs> yes, exactly. I know she, she'll do that. Uh, now, this is a busy week. Does everybody know what's happening on Tuesday? Does anyone not know what's happening on Tuesday? Prime Day. It's Prime Day. That's right. Amazon Prime Day. So if you are looking for a computer, you're looking for any Amazon products or anything like that, this is a really good time to think about. You know, we've, we've talked, I talked about uh, TCL TVs. Of course, there are Amazon Fire TVs. There's lots of lots of things that you can uh, lots of things that you can purchase. So uh, I think it's Tuesday and Wednesday will be Prime Day in both Canada and the United States. Now it's very interesting because usually Prime Day is in August or July, right? And so because the Black Friday is only a month away as well, so it's interesting to see what's going to happen this next month between Prime and Black Friday is going to be crazy good time to buy a computer if you're interested that's on that's of course on um tuesday on wednesday we have bill james apcug home automation and you gotta listen to bill he's a great speaker and he's this is going to be a really good presentation and also it's a good presentation for uh for you if um you want to use because they're all taped and you can use it for your club that's on Wednesday. And on Thursday, Huey, what's on Thursday? I can't remember. What's what's on Thursday? Are we doing something on Thursday? I think it's something called learning Chromebooks or something yeah, like that. Yeah, all right. Learning Chromebooks on Thursday. That's right. Yes. How would we go? How would someone how would someone get registered for that? They could go to the chat box and there's a bitly shortened uh, link right sitting right there right now that they can click on, it'll take them to the registration page. There you and go. And it's free. Hey, is it really? Hey, yeah. that's great. And and if they have already registered, do they have to register again? Nope. And nope. are you going to you... be good for about, uh, I think about six months. Okay. And I will send out a reminder to everybody who is registered. So if they have misplaced or can't remember where they stuck their link, it, they'll get their link again in the mail, uh, in their email, probably uh, Wednesday or Thursday morning. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, just in closing, uh, before I finish my segment, um, I wanted just to do one quick thing. I'm going to share my screen. And I wanted to 
talk about one quick thing here in my last minute. And um, <clears throat> Chris Rosinski wrote me this morning and said that he watched a video of a, of a yacht going around our Vancouver Island. And he said, what a beautiful area we live in. And this brought me up to uh, uh, an interesting thing that you can do. This is a channel I follow, and this is uh, Desiree and Jordan. They're a young couple who have um, no money. They bought a yacht, a, a 30 foot sailboat three, three years ago, and they're sailing around the world. And they um, basically, uh, they're, they're doing this and they produce YouTube videos on their, their experiences and travels. Yeah. And so if you want, and you can support <clears throat> them and so on and so forth. And there are a lot of these channels like this, and you can sort of be part of their, their great life experience as they travel around the world doing certain things. And so, um, and, and, and if you want to help support them, you can do that as well. And there's hundreds and hundreds of these. This is, I'm just using this as a sailing experience. This is one that I follow and really enjoy. So uh, if you want to have some fun and you want to follow people as they travel around, uh, be sure and look at YouTube because that's a, that's an interesting way of doing things. All right, Bob, are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Just as a reminder, uh, Canada isn't the only one having a holiday today. For us, it's Columbus Day. Oh, is it a holiday down there as well? Yes, it is. Oh, really? It's under holiday, yep. Is, and is Costco closed there too? No. Oh. Our senior center is closed. I can't get my lunch for today. I have to make my own. Ah, rats. And no mail today. And no mail today, correct. It's also Indigenous Peoples Day. Don't get me started. <laughs> Here is the security news roundup for the week ending October 9th, 2020. The IRS is under investigation for illegally tracking Americans. The Criminal Investigation Unit of the U.S. Internal Revenue Service is under fire for not securing warrants before purchasing and using location data harvested by mobile apps to track and identify criminal suspects. In a letter to the U.S. Treasury Inspector General of Tax Administration, Senator Ron Wyden and Elizabeth Warren demanded a formal investigation into the warrantless tracking, citing the actions of a breach of the Fourth Amendment. The senators write, the IRS is not above the law and the agency's lawyers should never provide IRS CI investigators with permission to bypass the courts and engage in warrantless surveillance of Americans. You have your opinions, I have mine. Stalking cases are on the rise during the pandemic. In a new cosmopolitan investigation, several recent stalking cases are examined in detail, each with its own specific story, mm. but all sharing a common theme. The victims were rarely taken seriously by law enforcement, while victims get persistently tormented by their stalkers each time they report it to the police it seems as a single incident and not treated as a persistent threat in england and wales 21 percent of women surveyed said they had been stalked in their adult lives paladin a uk stalking advocacy service reported a 40% increase in calls since lockdown began. Modern methods allow stalkers to use technology for tracking and tracing as a resource to potentially stalk victims. Avast has advice on how to spot the signs of stalkware on your phone and how to keep stalkware at bay. Tesla disbands its PR department. Electric vehicle blog Electric reported that Tesla has dissolved its public relations department, leaving no point of contact for press or media outfits. The blog states the move has been confirmed to Electric at the highest levels of Tesla, with the source saying, we no longer have a PR team. Tesla has not responded to press inquiries for several months because, according to Electric, the last person to leave 
the PR communications department at Tesla departed in December of 2019. Other PR personnel were shifted to new roles. There seems to be still a few PR managers in Tesla's European and Asian operations, but the core global team working out of the U.S. has been dissolved. I guess that's one way not to have complaints. Apple is holding its big virtual event on the same day as Amazon kicks <laughs> off Prime Day and Best Buy starts their Black Friday sale. Lots of places to spend money, but be careful. Check those sales. Not all sales are a bargain. If you don't have a Prime account, sign up for a 30-day free trial. Just remember to sign out by day 29 or you will get charged. Be sure you use a credit card to make your purchases so you have recourse. Cash and debit cards leave you without any leverage should you run into a problem with your purchase. When purchasing online, make sure the website is the genuine website, not a redirect. And that's all the security news for this week. Stay safe. Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Great. Hey, I didn't know Apple was doing on the same day, eh, Bob? Yep. This is going to be a heck of a month, and Best Buy doing it as well? Oh, man. It's just I don't need to buy another computer. That's the problem. <laughs> and I assume you can all see this. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Ron Brown, as he mentioned, asked me a recently if I would begin something of a little hopefully weekly report and I'm calling it Dewey's update and I'll have it cover in I hope we will be uh, useful information on windows cord cutting and technology but today's presentation announces that there is Roku announcing that they're launching a new operating system update Roku has announced that users <clears throat> will soon see an important, I have to get rid of something here because I can't see it. Okay, here we go. You, uh, users will soon see an important operating system update. The new 9.4.0 update will replace 9.3.0, which rolled out nearly a year ago. Roku users should remember that their Roku streaming device automatically checks for updates once each day. With this 9.4 update, users will find new ways to access their favorite content, along with even more free content. There are performance improvements as well. Users should see faster setup times when starting their device and when installing apps. Also faster launch times for many channels and faster video start times. Helping with performance and navigation are new improved Roku voice controls. Helpful hints will now appear on the screen to let users know about voice commands that can be used to find and launch favored content more quickly. The nine point, this is for Apple users. The 9.4 update will now support, that's big news, Apple AirPlay 2 and HomeKit on select 4K Roku devices. Apple users may expect this update to arrive before the end of 2020, I mean, before the end of 2020 or before 2021 starts. With AirPlay 2, Roku customers can stream, control and share content directly from an iPhone, iPad or Mac to a supported Roku device. HomeKit allows customers to easily and securely control their Roku device using the Home app and Siri on iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, and HomePad. Roku, this is, I'm gonna talk now about the Roku channel. Roku streaming service, pardon me, Roku streaming devices and Roku TVs have more than 2000 channels available. And most Roku, Roku users select the Roku channel as one of the dozen or so best channels for the Roku homepage. Until a year or so ago, the Roku channel had totally free content. It now contains both free and non-free or paid content. What's new with 9.4.0? The Roku channel is now available on all Amazon Fire TV platforms. And that's just very recent. Presently, Roku TV and Roku streaming device users may access the Roku channels live TV section directly from the Roku channels 
home screen with a half a dozen or so downward clicks. Clicking on the live TV tile brings more than 100 free and live streaming channels. A channel guide is included with the live TV option. For antenna users, if you use an antenna, your live TV and channel guide since July shows free live streaming channels as well as over the air broadcast channels. With the 9.4 update, Roku has changed this feature to allow hiding streaming channels from the guide if the user prefers to see only their antenna channels. By the way, that would be me. Uh, you may recall that Ron Brown showed you his TCL brand Roku TV last week. Presently, 15 TV manufacturers have Roku TVs in their model lineup. Roku TVs have built-in Roku streaming. They function like regular, like a regular TV that has a Roku device plugged into the TV's HDMI port. Uh, Roku's OS 9.4 update has begun rolling out <clears throat> to select Roku players and is expected to appear in the coming weeks to all supported streaming players, including the all new Roku Ultra and the new Roku Stream Bar. Regarding the $180 Roku Stream Bar, it combines a compact sound bar with a 4K HDR streaming device. Roku TVs may expect to receive the 9.4 update in phases over the coming months. A little bit of a disclaimer, I confess to being a longtime Roku user and I've stayed with Roku because of its relatively uncluttered home screen and general freedom from content pushing. When compared with its otherwise excellent competitor, Amazon Fire devices, the definition of content pushing is when a device tries to push a user to use their content rather than that of others. The Roku channel does tend to push their paid content at times. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dewey. Huey, are you ready? The Starlink Report. The Starlink Report. The Starlink Report, October 12th, 2020. I'm Huey Poplock. Elon Musk says Starlink now has enough to launch a public beta of its high-speed internet service. Elon Musk's goal of beaming high-speed internet to the remote parts of Earth using orbiting satellites just got a step closer to reality. SpaceX on Tuesday, October 6th, launched a batch of 60 Starlink satellites, bringing the total number in orbit to 770. Musk, SpaceX's CEO, said this was enough to start a public beta. Once these satellites reach their target position, we will be able to roll out a fairly wide public beta in northern U.S. and hopefully southern Canada. Other countries to follow as soon as we receive regulatory approval, Musk tweeted after the launch. They might not be in place, however, until February. SpaceX is providing satellite internet service to towns hit by wildfires. As SpaceX prepares to begin beta trials for Starlink, the service is already being put to use for residents in two Washington state towns hit by wildfires. SpaceX provided seven terminals for our agency to use for free where we saw the most need, the state's emergency management department said. The terminals are being used for free public Wi-Fi, but we also used them for incident command vehicles out of the Bonnie Lake, Washington wildfire, the department added. The Starlink satellite broadband network can currently deliver 100 megabits per second download speeds with a latency of around 30 milliseconds, which is on par with ground-based internet services. However, Starlink's main selling point is that SpaceX will theoretically be able to deliver fast broadband to anyone on Earth with a satellite dish outside of their home. As a result, customer interest in the upcoming broadband network has been high, especially among users based in rural areas or small towns 
who lack access to fast internet speeds. For now, the government is first targeting the northern U.S. and southern Canada for the public beta, as they are generally orbiting around the Earth along the higher latitudes. The company plans to expand to lower latitudes, including areas over Texas, three months from now as SpaceX sends more satellites into orbit. Average latency will improve as more satellites launch directly above you more frequently and more ground stations are deployed as we're able to put more ground stations on roofs of server centers, legacy internet latency will be zero. Now, research funded by the U.S. Army has concluded that the government mega constellation could have a secondary purpose, doubling as a low-cost, highly accurate, and almost unjammable alternate to GPS. Some researchers at the University of Texas at Austin claim to have devised a system that uses the same satellites piggybacking on traditional GPS signals to deliver location precision up to 10 times as good as GPS in a system much less prone to interference. SpaceX could more easily reach rural areas and begin to close the digital divide. A study from Broadband Now shows that in addition to working toward closing that gap, introducing a new internet provider could reduce the price of internet service by up to 40%. And this has been the Starlink Report. Thank you very much, Huey. That was great. Uh, now for my segment, uh, I'm going to share my screen and we'll share our computer sound. Now what I'm going to be talking about today is the making of Tech for Seniors video, the video that you see online on YouTube and there'll be two parts to this. This is part one. It's about a 15 minute part and that will be how, the, how it is made. And the second part next week, we'll be uploading it to YouTube and showing you how it actually all fits into YouTube. So here we go. Hope everyone enjoys this. Good morning. This is Ron Brown. What I'm going to show you this morning is the making of Tech for Seniors. How do we take our Zoom meeting and create a YouTube video? Let's watch the presentation to find out. The process of making the YouTube video is a four-step process. There's the recording of the show done by Zoom. There's the editing, the downloaded video, and I use a video editing program called Camtasia. There is the uploading to YouTube and the final editing in YouTube. Zoom has a recording feature that works very well. You can set it up to automatically record in the preferences, so as soon as you start your meeting, a recording will take place. This can be recorded locally on your computer, or it can be recorded in the cloud. If you want it recorded in the cloud, you have to use the paid version. Now the file that is created when you finish your meeting is an MP4 file. You probably understand what an MP4 file is as this is a video file. But in the video world, we call this file a baked, canned, or a flat file. In other words, it's uneditable and it is ready to be played. Now, it doesn't quite end there. To create the MP4 file, the file must be rendered. And this happens in two different ways. If you use the cloud recording of Zoom, when you finish your meeting, the process takes place in the cloud. And you will get an email from Zoom saying that your recording, your MP4 file, is ready for download. You simply can download this and place it in any video editing software you want. Or you can put it right onto YouTube. If you 
are recording it locally on your computer, Zoom puts some software on there that will render it on your own computer. So as soon as you end the meeting, the software will start and it will start rendering the recording to a MP4 file. The problem with this is it depends on how much horsepower your computer has. This actually is a fairly consuming task and if you have a computer with limited resources, it can take a very long time. So if you can, I think it's always better to have Zoom in the cloud do all the work. Now I'm going to play you a short video clip from Tech for Senior version or episode 28. And I want you to watch, watch and listen carefully to three things that you'll notice. First of all, you'll see the title card. Then you're going to see the Tech for Seniors intro with music. And then you're going to see a champagne cork popping. And I'd like you to pay attention to this as we play the video. And remember this because we're going to be referring back to this track. Tech for Seniors, October 5th, 2020, episode number 28, right? D right, Healy? There we go. <laughs> well done, well done. So, so the video you just saw was the edited version with the title, the intro, and the champagne added. The Tech for Senior recording by Zoom starts at 8.20 when the Tech for Senior staff log in. The social time is recorded at starts at 8.30 and runs to 9 but is deleted out of the final version. The Tech for Senior intro is added along with the title card. And being a live production, technology always doesn't go the way you think. In fact, I'm going to show you a bit later, but the champagne popping didn't actually go that way. That's the edited version. So let's see how this works. So how did I edit the MP4 file that Zoom created? Well, I edited this in a video editing program called Camtasia. There are many video editing software programs out there, and it's too many to talk about today. There are video, very good video editing software that are totally free, and you don't have to pay. Camtasia costs around $250 for an individual license. So why did I choose Camtasia as the video editing software I want to use? Well, largely it was the peer group that I hang around with. Uh, Huey uh, uses it, so does uh, Chris from Geeks on Tour and Michael Daniels. They all, the group that I hang around with all use Camtasia, so I wanted to uh, have some peer support. Camtasia has an excellent reputation and it provides advanced training in the Forbes of webinars. And over the past seven months, I've been taking webinars twice a month to get better at using this. And as you will look back on the original Tech for Seniors shows, the video editing was pretty rough, but I think it's getting a lot better in the last few issues. Anyway, I'd appreciate your comments on that. Now this is a diagram of Camtasia. 
and you'll see that I have actually uh, brought the MP4 file into the um, into the Camtasia software. And you'll see along the bottom here, you'll see the timeline, and this is the unedited version of, of, uh, of, of the recording, the Zoom recording. And here is the playhead that's sitting, and you'll see, of course, me here. Now let's watch and see what's happening here. All right, so I'm moving the playhead over to the very beginning. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to cut out the original half hour, all those socialization. So I bring the playhead over and hit the cut and out it goes. Then we're going to come up to the top here and we're going to add the title card that you saw. So this is where I add the title card. And then we're going to add the intro. The intro, of course, is made by Huey. And it uh, is the intro that you saw. And then we're going to snug them up and pull them all over together. Bring the playhead back. And now you'll see that this is how the video is going to look as we play. And you'll see as I drag the playhead along, you see we've now created the title card coming along to uh, to our uh, to our show. One of the problems with publishing on YouTube is their copyright infringement policy. There are many times in our Zoom meeting that I want to use pre-recorded YouTube material from other creators. For example, maybe I want to show a video on how to use a mouse. Well, somebody has certainly done this and it's very easy to play a video created by someone else in our YouTube, uh, in our Zoom meeting. And this is quite acceptable because, of course, it's within our own group and no one else is going to see it. However, when we publish it to uh, YouTube and we republish it, this is against their rules and will, allow, will cause a copyright infringement. And this is the same problem that we have with Ray in the music because it originates in YouTube. So what we do is I take out the uh, YouTube music segment that was recorded. Let me show you how I do that. And then we put the, uh, the outro in and the end screen. So let's have a look and see how that's done. You'll see as we play now. There we go. So now I'm I'm actually selecting. You'll see it's easy to see the YouTube video. It has a square sort of uh, sign on it, and we can just uh, remove that. And there, the uh, the video is now gone. And we're going to come up over to the left here, and we are going to put in our uh, our outro. And then I'm going to add. Uh, on the music, we use the music. Um, I really like this. Huey found this. This is called the Legends of One, and this is our music outro that I'm going to add. And here's the, and that's uh, that. Well, I'm going to add our end card there. We'll talk about the end card in a minute. And uh, here's our music coming up which is uh, Legends of One, and I'm going to add the music track below here and uh, shorten up the clip. And we're going to add some audio, some fade in here, and let's see how it looks as we, uh, for our, as we finish. And now you'll see the, uh, the outro coming in as the music comes up. And you'll see people saying goodbye. And here comes the outro. And then you'll see at the very end is the end card. And I'll explain what the end card is in just a moment. And there's the end card that will come up. And our video now is ready to be 
made into a MP4 file. And so we're going to come up to the top and we're going to export it. We hit the export button and we'll be exporting it to a local file. Here we go, next. And uh, we fill this in, we'll put tech for senior. And label it, and then this will be created as a file, an MP4 file, on the hard drive of my computer. And then the next step will be uploading it to, to YouTube. Everybody who works on the Tech for Seniors project has had many, many years of computer experience. And I would say they're all experts, and I'm very proud of the work they do. However, it is a live show, and sometimes things just don't work out the way you think they are. You might hit the wrong button, your computer won't work. It's technology, right? We've all experienced this. So not only do I edit and cut out parts of the show, I also try to make the presenters look better. And I'm going to play you two clips now of the champagne popping. Um, the first clip I'm going to play is exactly how it was recorded, and you'll see it's not how I presented it. So the first clip is Huey doing the champagne popping. The second clip you're going to see is actually how the video editing looked. Tech for Seniors, October 5th. 2020, episode number 28, right, the, right, Healy? Well, let me share my screen for a moment and show you something to see. Okay, all right, share your screen. What, what have you got for us? Well, let's see. i got to click this and... Uh... Oh. oh, I bet I didn't turn the music on, though, did I? No, sir, you did not. Whoops. I, now I stopped sharing, hit the wrong button, so, but let me play the music again and do that again. Sorry about that, folks. I don't want to waste your time, but we got to start over again. And here we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Tech for Seniors, October 5th, 2020, episode number 28, right? The, right, Healy? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. So... All right, and next week I'll show you how we upload the files to YouTube and how we edit it in YouTube and how I put Ray's music back in so it legally can be shown. Huey, are you up? Are you ready to go? Today we're going to create an animated GIF from PowerPoint Slides. I'm Huey Poplock. So what is an animated GIF? Well, here's an example of one. Here's another. A GIF, also pronounced GIF, is merely an animated picture, but not in the same aspect as a video. You see, folks can use this file extension to create still images like a JPEG or a PNG, but also create pictures that move. The animated pictures will look like a video, but at a much lower quality and without sound. Additionally, I should point out, that the GIF file format was not created with animations in mind. Keep in mind also that GIF was created in 1987 and last updated in 1989, making the format older than the internet itself. So how do we convert a PowerPoint or a PPT or PPTX to a GIF? To create an animated GIF from your slides, you first 
must open the PowerPoint document, then click on File. After that, be sure to select Export from the menu that comes up because we're going to save the information in GIF format. The final step here is to click on Create with the animated GIF. And from there, you will want to select the resolution of the GIF before creation. By default, it's set to Medium, which is 720p. Click on Medium, and from the drop-down menu, choose a resolution that makes sense to you. After doing all of that, change the time spent on each slide. It's around one second by default, so you may want to make it longer. Finally, click on Create GIF to complete the task. Then you open up the saved GIF in the Photos app or any other third-party tool that you're most comfortable with. Let's do a demo because I'm sure that none of that made sense to you until you see it in action. I put together five slides in a PowerPoint that I want to make an animated GIF from and then post the animated GIF on Facebook. So let's take a look at what I've got first and we'll go ahead and take a look at each of the slides. We'll start with the first one, some information about my Windows Special Interest Group and, and subscribing to my newsletter. The Tech for Seniors show that uh, Ron Brown and I do every Monday and some information about it and some information about the new Learning Chromebooks show. So we've got the five slides I've already made up in PowerPoint. We're going to go to the first one. Okay, so now what I have to do is I go to the file at the top of the menu. So we come down to export. We click on export. We have several ways in which we can export this file. And one of the ways is create an animated GIF. So when I click on it, I can create an animated GIF. You save the presentation as an animated GIF. It preserves animations, transitions, media, and ink. Note transitions not preserved with transparent background. So it doesn't include any kind of a transparent background, and it doesn't include any recorded timings. Now, there are different sizes that you can save this to. This is a drop-down. You can go from extra large, which is the uh, largest file size, Full HD quality at 1080p at 24 frames per second. Large would be uh, a high quality at 720p at 24 frames per second. Medium is a, fi a medium file size and moderate quality at 480 at 15 frames per second. And for a small one would be at 240 by 50 at 15 frames per second, depending upon what you want. For Facebook, your medium would, should be fine. Now, the next item here is seconds spent on each slide. Because I've got a lot of things for people to read, I don't want it to go as quickly as we might if it were just some pictures that we were making an animated GIF with. So we might make this two seconds on each slide. And then all you have to do is click on Create the GIF and then it wants to save it. So what we're going to do is we're going to save it in my folder. Let's save it here. And then I am going to save it in the folder where I'm keeping all of this information. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it the demo file for PowerPoint to GIF, dot GIF, and we're going to save it. And that's it. Now, if we go to that file, we find the GIF is right here, and let's click it. And I'm going to move it here. Each screen lasts two seconds, and it's starting over again. That's what we want it to do. It's looping. And now I have an animated GIF that I could upload to Facebook or put it on a web page. I could tweet, uh, send it as a tweet. And the file itself, 
let's take a look at it. The file itself is only 537K. It's not even a mega, it's a half a megabyte. And it's 853 by 480. So it is a nice size. You could put it in an email, you could send it uh, to somebody, uh, or you can post it. Let's make an animated GIF out of six portraits. Now these are AI generated pictures. They're not real people and they do look real, but we're going to take six photographs of people and make an animated GIF. And we're going to try it at different sizes so you get to see the difference in the sizes. So let's go ahead and we've got our six pictures already each in a PowerPoint slide. And if you remember, what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, and we're going to go to Export, and we're going to go to Animated, Create an Animated GIF. This time, let's start with Extra Large. And we're going to leave it at one second for each for this, because all we're doing is we're looking at a picture. We don't have to read anything. We could even make it quicker than that if we wanted to, and we may do one of those when we're done. So let's go ahead and generate a GIF. And let's call this photos. Uh, we'll just put a one in front of it to generate, to make it different. We'll save it. Then we're going to do another one. This time we're going to export, create an animated GIF. Instead of extra large, we'll do large. We'll leave it at the same number of seconds. This time it's 720. And we're going to generate. And we're going to call this one two. and save. We'll do it again. Export. Create an animated GIF. This time we're going to make it medium. And we're going to create an animated GIF. We'll call this one three. And save it. And we're going to do one more. Actually we're going to do two more. We're going to do one more at this size or at this time. Create an animated GIF, keep it at one second, and we're going to create it, but once instead of medium, we're going to make them small and create an animated GIF. And this time we're going to call it four. And save it. And we're going to do one more. File, export. We're going to create an animated GIF. This time, let's make it a half a second. And, cre and let's uh, make this one, just so we can see it better, we'll make it medium, we'll create the GIF, and we're going to call this one 5. And save it. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're going to minimize this, we're going to open up our files, and we're going to... Okay, let's try the first one. Extra large. We want to fit it in our screen so you can see it all. That's the extra large. Let's do number two, which was large. Let's make sure we've got it in our screen. Let's try the third one now, which was medium. Okay, and the fourth one was small. And if you remember the last one, we did medium, but we did it uh, in a half a second each. So it should go faster. So 
So now you know how to make an animated GIF from a PowerPoint slide presentation. I'm Huey Poplock. Let's see if I got one to share. So uh, learning from my esteemed colleagues, I've also uh, have started the idea of pre-recording it for, for a couple of reasons. Good morning, Tech for Seniors. Today, Monday, October 12, 2020, and we're going to hear about Dolly Parton with Pentatonix and the song Jolene. If Elvis is the king of rock and roll, then in my humble opinion, and with all due respect to Kitty Wells and Reba McIntyre, the legendary Dolly Parton has to be the modern day queen of country music. In addition to the dozens of awards and honors she has received for her musical career, including nine Grammys, she has also been nominated for awards in both the film and television industries, as well as Broadway. In today's video clip, Dolly sings one of her many signature songs, Jolene, with the acapella group Pentatonix, named after the Pentatonic musical scale. Take note of the singer on the far right who provides vocal percussion and gives us the word of the day, beatboxing. In 2011, Pentatonix won the third season of NBC's The Sing-Off, which was a competition among acapella groups. If their singing appeals to you, look on YouTube at their versions of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah and Simon and Garfunkel's The Sound of Silence. Trivia of the day, number one. While Dolly's debut album, Hello, I'm Dolly, was released in 1967, her first 45 RPM single, Puppy Love, which is not the Paul Anka song, was released in 1959 when she was just 13 years of age. Take a moment and check this song out on YouTube. It has some terrific photographs of a young Dolly. And trivia point number two, Dolly is the godmother to Miley Cyrus, both being from the state of Tennessee. Finally, a reminder that the Tech for Seniors weekly newsletter provides a recap of these comments and links to the video. Here we go. Wow, she looked a lot younger in that video. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, you check out the song Puppy Love on YouTube. She's 13 years old singing it. So if you really? think it's done today, you'll be really thrilled at that uh, particular clip. And yes. what I did today also was I, instead of playing off of YouTube and having a problem maybe with bandwidth, I just downloaded that video yeah. to my computer and incorporated it in the PowerPoint presentation. It worked well. It was perfect. It really did a good job with that. I enjoyed that very much. Thanks, Ray. Welcome. Yeah, great tune too. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's great. That's really good. Well, yeah. hey, guess what? This is a huge show today. Oh, wow. Did we ever cover a lot of stuff? Remember, you can see it again on YouTube. The uh, Sign up to the newsletter. Make sure you've signed up and you'll get the link sent out tomorrow and you can watch it all again and, and come back to specific points through the, uh, through the show. Anyway, I want to thank everyone for coming today. It's the top of the hour. We have done another uh, episode 29. 30 is next week. So it just gets better each week. Here you're going to be around next week. I plan on it. Bob. I want to see myself week? turn 30. <laughs> Ray. Wouldn't miss it. Hey, I want to see Dewey. myself turn 30. Yep. There you go. Dewey. I'll be here. Happy is, jo is Joanne going to have her, her uh, little uh, uh, pinchers yeah. on your ear there? Hi, Joanne. Hi. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Thanks, everyone, for coming. And we will see you next week. Same time, same place. And uh, Bye, everybody. Enjoy Bye -bye. your holiday. Bye. Stay safe.